Hello, Rosa Scheib here with uh, another one of my thought bubbles and kind of wanted to talk about some of what's happened in the space. Um, as we know about November 8th, Segwit 2X was called off. A number of the major signatories that were uh, participants that were developing Segwit 2X uh, stated that it wasn't going to go through. Uh, about a month prior to that, Jeff Garzik, one of the main developers of Segwit 2X, and I guess some of the members of his team have already left. So there was no further development. Then there was a rumor that Segwit 2X was still going to go on with perhaps 30% of the mining power, which if you uh, watch James Bond, and I have a link of his uh, YouTube channel, the series of episodes he's been doing since, the call off you will notice that there is a missing hash power on the bitcoin network even though the value has gone up the meme pool of course has gone up um you know transaction fees have gone up things of that nature people are still utilizing bitcoin uh but supposedly the segway 2x hard fork still occurred uh still developing someone possibly went off and forked it but it's very weak i guess you could say a very weak chain then there's the issue of you know bitcoin classic a bitcoin classic where there is somebody still uh utilizing the original classic chain when uh bitcoin cash uh removed their eda uh, their uh, emergence difficulty adjustment and changed it to where it's more easy and mineable and there wasn't such a flux of miners on and off and more consistency, if you will, with the hashing power. It's still very, uh, what, Bitcoin Cash? And put Bitcoin Classic. It's been around for about, what is it, August, September, October, November. So four months now. So it's very, so it's still very small, very nascent. Um, not as big, of course, as Bitcoin or even some other cryptocurrencies out there. And one of the biggest developments, if you will, was the fact that when Sorry about that. I had to do a wardrobe change. The temperature like decided to drop like 10 degrees on me. And I'm a very skinny girl. So, basically, what also happened with the whole Segwit 2X forking was, I guess, nodes were still activated and signaling, as well as some of the mining power by default, maybe. And it stalled out. It actually activated early and stalled out and basically crash the nascian network now that's bad that's garbage really and it just shows that the development team wasn't as good as core uh they weren't as transparent i think in the editing and the coding and just all to get all together putting it together which is bad it's bad that all these companies didn't actually put forth and pay for the development to work and you know shame on them for that shame on them for that because if everyone had got for segwit 2x with this development team it would crash bitcoin it would crash the network and we would all be panicking right now that being said i do agree with some of the cries out there that they should apologize for that they should apologize for having a shitty development team for putting shitty code out there for putting a code that wasn't as tested as developed and as sound as a uh, bitcoin core and any other uh cryptocurrency out there that's functioning what i do disagree with people is the fact that they are demanding the, these companies like coinbase i think shapeshift has done it but then you see these posts that say shapeshift doesn't have sacred addresses um, BitPay demanding that they have SegWit, SegWit addresses and that's ridiculous the whole purpose of a soft fork and I've talked about this in the past is that you don't have to upgrade if you don't want to you don't need to upgrade if you are not on like the latest greatest like a uh, 
computer or server to run a node all right maybe you have like a 2g 2 gig ram uh node running you don't have to upgrade you can still participate in the network you're just not going to see those segwit blocks if you will you're still able to push those confirmations for those transactions and still propagate the blocks across the network same thing with the addresses if you still have the one address which is what the oh If I put it here, if I could talk with my hands. Uh, if you had put, uh, you know, the, the what address, which is the default Bitcoin address, SegWit is three. It begins with a three. Uh, and multi sig addresses begin with a three. Multi sigs, there's some different multi sigs that begin with different uh, configurations, if you will, when it comes to Bitcoin, but that's for another time. Uh, where was I going here? Oh, yeah. So you don't have to, um, you don't have to upgrade. You can still hold. Your, your Bitcoin is still valid if it's in a paper wallet or a hard, ad hard wallet with that one address. It's not going to disappear. It's not going to be invalidated. You can move it to a different, another one address and it still propagates across the network. Now, I talked about Coinbase, how it might not be in Coinbase economic interests since they're on-ramping. The majority of the new users that are utilizing Bitcoin in the states or in the western portion of the Bitcoin ecosystem, it, that it would be very confusing for them to go from a Bitcoin address that has a one to a Bitcoin address that has a three. It's going to confuse users. It just is. That's that's how it is. We have not done enough due diligence in hello in helping new users, noobs, become aware of a number of different facts about Bitcoin. And so, like, I haven't even seen an educational video about SegWit addresses. Like, you used to see about Bitcoin with, like, the little cartoon about what Bitcoin is, or any, uh, like, that very simple, basic, one to five minute videos out there just propagating through, you know, YouTube, Twitter, or any of the social media, or Facebook ad facebook videos out there I, I haven't even seen that and you and you want people on wrapping using a segwit address it's, it's going to be confusing but more importantly they don't have to honestly they don't have to and if you don't want to use a wallet provider that doesn't have segwit address then move your business elsewhere that's the whole purpose and point of this system is we don't really have to do anything we don't have to do this or that or another there's no guns to people's head it's a voluntary system they can do their business how they will and if it's a shitty business decision then the market is going to reflect that and their people are going to use their product so for people to call them out and saying that they should upgrade to segment is bullshit two do I think them not upgrading to SegWit for many of these companies that um, have wallet providers that sign for the new, new to the New York agreement are doing so to uh, propagate the belief that you know the transaction fees are high? Yeah, I do, I do. But you can roll the punches with that Bitcoin. We can we can survive that if you consider that an attack. I personally don't consider that a really truly an attack. And I'm going to talk about this whole concept of attacks and economic attacks uh, eventually. We're going to kind of build up there. Um, so, yeah, I do think some of those companies are that. And some of them are just legitimate, have not, uh, they're still working on it. They're massive companies, particularly Coinbase. They have to get everything, you know, correct and right. And considering what has happened with the SegWit 2x and the development of that do you really want them to put out sloppy code sloppy wallet addresses where people are going to lose shit no so let them take them time even if it took three months let them take six months let them take a year okay let them slow acid if you want people are going to go to wallets that provide segwit addresses they're going to move their coins that way the other thing is even Peter Todd has stated that there should be less of an emphasis at SegWit 2x lower, lowers the transaction fees. 
it's, it's not. It's only being used by 10 to 12 percent of the network right now. And there's a lot of wallet providers out there that provide SegWit 2x. So if there was a tremendous amount of people that wanted to transmit and use SegWit addresses, they would have moved their coins already. They've moved it to SegWit already equivalent addresses, hard wallets, things of that nature. And it looks to be about 10 to 12 percent, sometimes even lower. But then again, there's a lot of noobs in the space, and then maybe they just don't realize that or know that or have access to that information or don't understand how to move. And that is our responsibility as people who are aware of these things to educate people, to educate them so that they are aware of these things about SegWit 2x addresses, which wallets provide them, how to utilize it, and why it's important. So those are my quick thoughts. I just found it very unseemly, if you will, to demand that a business conduct a business a certain way. You can demand if you like. You can say, hey, do it this way, do that way. And if they don't, take your business elsewhere. And when I mean like demand, I mean like make a suggestion, make a statement, if you will, to conduct yourself in, a, in such a fashion. And if they don't, like if you're a customer and say, I want SegWit addresses, and they're like, no, we're not doing SegWit addresses, then move somewhere else. That, that's just what you do. That's what the whole point of a free market system, of freely engaging, interacting, uh, conducting one's business in a, fashion, a certain fashion, is that we don't have to participate in certain levels. We don't have to participate this way or that way. Uh, unlike the current global economic system where if I wanted to go to somebody and demand that, uh, for example, that business right there. If I wanted to demand that Valero do Bitcoin or else, you know, they're going to like, no, we're not going to do Bitcoin. And that's the end of it. And as a customer, I would like, okay, well, I'm going to go to some other gas station and they're going to be fine. Because they have an overwhelming majority of people that use cash, fiat, debit, credit card to purchase their, purchase their um, gas, if you will, and, or other essentials. And they don't necessarily need for me my Bitcoin, my business at this point in time. Now, eventually we will get to a point where to a business saying no to Bitcoin might be a negative thing. It might be a bad thing. It might be something where people get outraged about. Or like, well, then I'm not connecting my business with you at all. And they'll see a lot of dip in business. But we haven't reached that point yet. So we'll see what the new year brings. We'll see what happens when Coinbase dumps those uh, Bitcoin Cash or Bitcoin Cash coins out to the market. Um, we'll see how things shake out. You know, the space is still a little toxic. It's not going away. This is the state. This is the op uh, opus. Our, this is how we're operating, where we kind of attack and meme and Twitter each other. If we don't have uh, the same opinions or express opinion contrary to what you might believe. It's it's not going anywhere. It started around 2013, a little bit in 2012, but 2013, we've been this operating this way for the last almost four years, going on five. This is what the space is, and it's unfortunate. So that's it. That's my thought of the time. Uh, a little bit of news update. We'll see how this Bitcoin SegWit 2X development uh, shakes out over the weekend. It activated like the 16th, failed, but something is still going on there. We'll see how Bitcoin Classic, how much of uh, the mining and the nodes and operators go, how how small it will be, how much of the network it will be, and whether there will be a reorg or replay protection implemented or where it goes from here. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening and to the moon.